welcome to the very first episode of Music and More, where we discuss great music with great musicians and have a lot of fun doing so. My name is Elliot Moore, and I'm the conductor of the Longmont Symphony Orchestra. Thanks so much for joining us. Well, we're all in a little bit of a pickle right now due to COVID-19. And I don't know about you, but I would love to go on vacation, which is why I've decided for this very first episode to highlight Smetna's The Moldau. It's a wonderful musical journey. Also on this episode, we'll be meeting the cellist of Longmont, and I'll be taking your questions. But first, I wanted to show you a little bit where I'm filming. This is my home office, and I wanted to give you a bit of a tour. Here are about half of my musical scores that I use to uh, conduct from. I have various posters from past performances around my office. This particular one was from my Carnegie Hall debut in 2015. And also here, I have various books on music. Well, let's get started. First things first, I have to have my coffee. Generally, when I'm having my coffee in the morning, I like to study a score. And this morning, I'm studying Beethoven's Fifth Symphony uh, with, with while I'm having some coffee. Uh, we are going to be performing that work once we uh, get back from all of this with COVID and uh, I'm working my tail off to uh, make sure that I'm prepared and do the work justice. Well, another thing that I do most mornings is I play a little bit of piano and cello. Uh, so I'm going to show you where I have my piano. I'm walking now into my living room where we have our piano. And one of the things that I love so much about this piano is that I got it for free. And in case anyone's wondering, it's actually not that uncommon to get pianos for free because uh, many people think of them really as being uh, just pieces of furniture. And so if you look online, you can often get pretty nice pianos uh, at no cost except for the price of moving it. Here is my cello, which I love dearly and I'm going to go ahead and play some of my morning routines. That's a good girl. Hey Winnie, sit. Good girl, say hello to everyone. Oh, you want a belly rub. You want a belly rub. Oh, yeah. So this is my dog Winnie. She's a real sweetheart. Oh, and this is Coco. Coco decided to come and say hello too. Here you go, Coco. Yeah, whoa, yeah, there you go. They're best friends. Well, I've definitely showed you kind of an ideal morning. Um, you know, I love having my coffee, studying some scores, playing with my dogs. I'll be honest though, there are a couple of things that I've had concerns about when it comes to making some of these videos. You know, one is that um, the dogs could be barking at any moment. The other is that my wife, she, uh, likes to order things online and so we often have kind of a parade of people coming in and uh, delivering packages which uh, could interrupt this video at any time. <phone rings> Sounds like it just happened. Let's go see who's at the door. Pumpkin, who's there? Herr Beethoven! Herr Beethoven, what are you doing here? I heard that you were making a TV show here called Music and More. I thought I should join you. Maybe give you a few pointers. Maybe start by calling it Beethoven in Longmont. You heard that I was making a TV show? That's amazing. I thought you were deaf. Well, of course it's okay if you stay and listen. And I would love your insights. Although I'm not quite sure about the name of the show. Um, the only thing is that you have to sit over there because now we have this rule where it's six feet away that we have to stay from each other. It, it is what it is. Is that okay? Smetna's The Moldau is one of my all-time favorite symphonic works. It is, on the one hand, easy to understand because it's what's called a tone poem. A tone poem is when a composer uses tones to paint a picture through music. And the subject in our case of the Moldau is a river. 
And we meet the river, the Moldau, at its source, and then we accompany it as it flows through the Czech Republic to the city of Prague. And I'm going to use the composer's own words to describe what happens along the way. The composition describes the course of the Voltava, or the Moldau, starting from the two small springs. One, represented by the flute, which is the cold, and the other, which is represented by the clarinets, which is the warm spring. Here the clarinets are about to join. There. The unification of both creates a single current. Here is that. The course of the river then runs through woods and meadows where there are men on horses accompanied by hounds who are all on a hunt. The river continues to flow through a landscape where a farmer's wedding is being celebrated with dancing. The river continues its way to the round dance of the mermaids, dancing in the moonlight. On the nearby rocks loom castles, palaces, and old ruins. The river swirls, thus creating rapids. Then, the river widens flows into the capital, Prague. Finally, the Moldau majestically vanishes into the distance. Well, fortunately, meaning in music is not a right or wrong thing. I think that the description that Smetna gives us is a great description, uh, but I happen to hear something a little bit different in it. For me, the Moldau is not a work about a river per se. Rather, Smetna, in my opinion, is using the river to personify a life experience. Let's begin back at the beginning. I think that the opening of the work is not about um, two different sources of water coming together, but rather it's about two different humans coming together, weaving together to create one being. As this precious life begins to find its own way, it begins to develop its own personality and its own ego. As the work progresses, there is the farmer's wedding. And to me, this is a great representation of our carefree 20s, our social lives, and our desire to just fun. Following that, I think is maybe more of our 30s, which is when we fall in love. And that is represented, of course, by swimming in the moonlight with mermaids. What follows next is a very important and maybe not so pleasant part of life, which is a crisis. And that is represented, of course, by the rapids, St. John's Rapids. And here, all the swirling sounds, to me this could be uh, cancer, the loss of a loved one, some kind of crisis that occurs in our lives. And let's have a listen to that moment in the work again. Now that we have navigated this most challenging moment in our lives, it allows us for something great to happen, which is to refine our personality, our, who we are. And that person, of course, 
from our carefree years, except now it has this lifetime of experience that will accompany us into the twilight of our lives. One of the most amazing parts of the mall now is at the very end when the river majestically vanishes into the distance. What's so interesting about this is that for the first time we are not accompanying the river in the story, but rather the river is going on without us. And I believe that is because we have died. I think that there are a couple of really awesome images that um, I imagine at the end of this work. I imagine that sort of I'm rising up and as I'm going up, I can see sort of the river going in and out and as though it becomes this silver, uh, silver ribbon. And from this vantage point, I can see all around, I can see the beginning of life, I can see all the different lives that I've touched, all the different sort of stories and flashbacks, but I can also see how the flow of my life has impacted the world. And I think that it is a very moving image to have as this river goes on into eternity. Well, here is a complete performance of the Moldau performed by the Longmont Symphony back in 2018.
Well, I hope that you all enjoyed that. What about you, Herr Beethoven? Was there anything that I missed? Anything that you'd like to add? Yes, that is indeed very interesting, all the things that you have said. And I now have heard this piece in a new way, and I sincerely thank you for that. That said, there is one thing that I would like to put forth to your listeners, which is that most people assume that I, Beethoven, was the only person who has ever gone deaf, who was a composer. Now, that is not exactly true. Both Smetana and I, we share a rare distinction, which is that Smetana went deaf before he composed this work, the Moldau. That is indeed a rare distinction amongst composers, don't you think? That certainly is a very interesting point, Herr Beethoven, and certainly not one that I had thought of. Well, thank you so much for joining us, and I hope to see you again soon. Well, thank you very much. If there is anything that you need, I will be down here. Herr Beethoven, you do know that you're going into my basement, right? I know. Would you please bring me a towel? I intend to stay a little while. Well, I definitely think that we owe Beethoven a round of applause for that. And I gotta say, I feel pretty lucky to have him living in my basement. Well, now we're gonna turn our attention to the cellists of Longmont, who have created this awesome virtual performance for us all to enjoy. Here are the cellists of Longmont. Hi, my name is Marco, and I am a cellist in the Longmont Symphony. Playing with Longman Symphony is a great joy, and I always look forward to rehearsals and our performances. I definitely can't wait for when we can play together again. Thank you. Isn't it great seeing the cellists of Longmont coming together to figure out a way during this challenging time to make music together? And of course, they're not just doing it for themselves, but they're doing it to lift people up in our community through music. Well, great shout out to these cellists of Longmont. Thanks so much, guys. Now we're going to be moving on to your questions, and we received a number of them. What makes a great conductor? I think it's tremendous musical knowledge. Who's my favorite musician? I think that would have to be Mstislav Rostropovich, the great Russian cellist and conductor. Every note that he played and conducted, he was 100% committed to. And also, his music making was always at the service of something greater. What was my dream as a child? Well, I think it was to become a professional tennis player, and obviously that didn't turn out very well. Hmm, my favorite recording. I would say that the first one that comes to mind is Portrait of Yo-Yo Ma. It's a wonderful recording that uh, shows all of his artistry 
and so many different musical styles, and I, it's something I actually think about a lot when it comes to programming. Our last question is from Gonzalo at Whittier International Elementary School. He writes, what inspired you to become a conductor? And for me, the answer is that I saw how music, and particularly an orchestra, can be a symbol for community and really make the community a better place to live. Thanks so much for those great questions. Please keep them coming, and don't forget to tune in next time to Music and More.